Okay, dear friends, shh. let us go. We have a lot to do today. Things are really exciting. We are about to meet the heroine of our story, whose name is... No. I said we're about to meet the heroine, heroine of our story, whose name is... Yeah. No, that's not her name. Sarah, Bashi. listen, what's her name? Vashti. No, heroine. Vashti. Vashti's gone. She's been killed, head chopped off, head on a platter. She's gone. So it's a good question. Her name is... What are you going to say, Gila? Hadassa. Hadassa says Gamara was her real name. Let us meet her. She is the heroine of our story. Vashti is long gone. Just a quick recap, something I didn't mention. Remember, Achashverosh is looking for someone to come. This is important. Tachat Vashti. What does Tachat mean? Now, it's two ways it. It could mean instead of, and that's how he translated it. Because he did love, he did love Vashti. And he was upset that she was to be killed. But Tachat also means, literally, underneath. Now, this is really important. Because remember, once bitten... Did you learn proverbs in school in America? No. Once bitten, twice shy is the expression. He was bitten once by Vashti, who came from royal blood. She has gone. He didn't want to make that mistake again. And therefore, everything he's going to do right now in selecting a new queen is going to make sure that it doesn't happen again. He's looking for someone to come instead of Vashti, but also underneath Vashti, who's not going to have the same uh, political, um, psychological power that she had over him. One of the things he's going to do and has done, we started the last class mentioning, was to make a big, what I thought was a beauty pageant, but actually wasn't. He's going to gather together, we're going to see literally <laughs> gather together, use that word deliberately, women from all over the kingdoms that he controlled, and to bring them to Shushan, to Shushan Habira, important, we're going to see there's two locations. There's Shushan, and then there is Shushan Habira. Shushan Habira is the capital power center within Shushan, and it was actually, there was a, a moat of water, Sikh around it, and a wall, obviously, because... He's a crazy dictator, and what they want to do is to protect themselves from, from assassination. We're going to see, actually, there's going to be an assassination attempt against, we're going to see this class, Achashverosh's life from where? Shushan or Shushan Abira or somewhere else? Shushan Abira. From Shushan Abira. Okay, that's coming in a few moments. That's going to come in a few moments, okay? So now he's going to gather together all these women into Shushan Abira, into the capital city, into the area where he is operating out of. And he's going to do this for very, very, for a number of, number one, he wants a woman. He can grab any woman he wants. So why is he making this whole contest? Why is he making this whole contest to bring 127 women into Shushan Habira? So they're always vying against each other. He wants to create a power struggle, even among the potential wives. Because if he picks one woman from the beginning, what's going to happen? She's going to come along and take control. So he thinks, you know what? I'll make certain connections between them. I'll stick them in the same place, the base on Nashim. Let them all be against each other so that when I select one wife, I can always be like, I got plenty more. Ironically, ironically, what's going to happen? Ironically, it doesn't work. His exact plan goes against him. He's going to end up with one wife who he's immediately going to lift up and she's going to be the one that takes control over everything. So all of his plans pretty much come to naught anyway. Okay, so last class we met Mordechai, Ben Yar, Ben Shib, Ben Kish, Ishimini, from the tribe of Benjamin. We see he was the first person in Jewish history to be called Yehuda, right? To be called a Yehudi, a Jew, okay? Not from the tribe of Judah, so obviously it comes as a, as a title, which we all go by. There's a number of firsts. We're going to see another first in a few moments, with the names of the months. The names of the months appear, I believe, for the first time over here in Megillat Esther. So that's coming as well. 
Um, and by the way, when you read that verse about Mordechai, uh, it's one of the, uh, I think, four verses that we read out loud during the Megillah. Everyone joins in. Because he's such a central person that we all, when, they, when we hear the Megillah, when the, the Korah reads the Megillah, we all read out that verse together. Okay, so this is the Mordechai who came from Yerushalayim, we said. So he's still connected to Yerushalayim. That's very important. When Nebuchadnezzar destroyed uh, the Jewish people and kicked them out into Babel. Okay, let's meet our heroine right now with verse, chapter 2, verse 7. Vayihi, omen et hadasa. Omen et hadasa. He was a caretaker of somebody called Hadasa. Who was Hadasa? Who was she? So this was her real name, Hadasa. Who is she? But who is she? What's her relationship? How does she turn up? What's she doing over here? She is, she is, uh, I wouldn't go with foster child. Let's have a look. We're going to get two descriptions, one explicit, one is marumaz. It is hinted at. Look at the words very carefully. The words here, remember, Mordechai and Esther, when they wrote the words, they had to do things to keep Ahasuerus happy. Because at the end of the Megillah, when they wrote this down, Ahasuerus is going to read it. And there's some things they do want to put explicitly to annoy him. Because remember, this is not a story of redemption. It's a story of survival. That's important. Megillah Esther is not a story of redemption. We're not redeemed at the end. We're still under the control of Ahasuerus. Some went back to Israel. That's true. About 30% of the Jewish people. But most stayed outside. It's not a story of redemption. We're not redeemed like the Pesach story. We are surviving. And that itself is worth celebrating. Just Jews surviving during our Semitic times is dayenu. You know what I'm saying? Okay? So there's a lot of things they had to put inside the Megillah which were more subtle. We're about to see one. We're about to see one very interesting one. Okay. Uh, he, Esther, she's going to be known for the entirety of the Megillah as Esther. I'll come to that name in a second. It's a very important name. It's going to tell us a number of things. Okay. She's Bat Dodo. She is a cousin. A cousin of Mordechai. Ki en la avem. She has no parents. So she's Mordechai's cousin. She's Mordechai's cousin. She's also an orphan. Now that's obviously important as well. She has no parents. So Mordechai takes care of her. Right? Well, we'll see they're a similar age. And she's also a cousin. Okay? So on the surface, that's it. She has no one to go, moves in, and that's the end of it. Right? She was an extremely finely featured and beautiful woman. Okay? And Mordechai took her over uh, when her parents died. When her parents died. Okay? Mordechai Velakha Mordechai Lo Labat. Mordechai took her as a daughter. Now, when you read that, you think, okay, he, she was just a foster child, her parents died, he's in the family, he took over. The Gemara says, I'll decree but, Ella, buy it. Don't read but, daughter, read buy it, which is, well, home or house, but buy it is usually a term for a wife. And there is an opinion in the Gemara, it's an opinion, that he actually was married to his cousin. They were married to each other. Why does the Megillah tell us explicitly if that's true, and therefore remove all doubt? Well, remember, we don't want Achashverosh to look at the Megillah after and be like, whoa, whoa, one second, what are you telling me? You two are married? Off with her head. And believe me, he's capable of doing that, because he already did it when he comes unpleased. And therefore, that's a clear example of Mordechai and Esther hinting exactly why is that important for us to even know, even as a hint? Why is that important? Why do we need to know they were even married? Because it puts a whole new emphasis on the sacrifice they both went through. He's lost his wife, she's lost her husband, and she's now forced, we're going to see forced, to marry this Meshuggah, Achash Feirosh. It puts a whole new perspective on the Maseret Nefesh, yeah? Yes, we are going to see that. We're going to see, over here we're told she's extremely beautiful, and yet we're going to see right now, actually just saw her without realizing it, that she was not pretty at all. And I'm going to answer that contradiction. Answer that contradiction for you. 
Okay? It's a good question. It's a good question. Okay? So that's her. She's married to Mordechai, according to the Gemara. And news has got out that Achashverosh is to be married. Vayihi, Bishamadava Melech Vedato, when the announcement went out that he was looking for a wife, Vahi Kabet Narot Rabot. They Kabet. What does Kabet mean? What does Kabet mean? They gathered from kibbutz. They gathered together thousands of women in each city. Eventually, he had to end up with one from each, and those are the 127 that were brought to Shushan Ha-Bira. But they gathered together. Does that seem like a word of, of acquiescence? Does it sound like they were grabbed off the streets or they were volunteering for the position of marrying Achashverosh? What does it sound like, Ikar Betz? Remember, every Hebrew word on the board must be written down and known. It seems like they... We just, just know, actually, kibbutz. They just gathered them up. Let's go. Bus number one, beauty pageant. We'll be deciding who marries Achashverosh. That's what it seems like. In contrast, in contrast to Rabot El Shishnapira El Yad Hagai. We'll see what it is. Vatila Kach Esther. So that's all women are just gathered together. But Esther is Tila Kach. What's Tila Kach? Taken. Taken. Lakach. Taken against her will. They were all working towards getting into Shushanabira for the position of wifey, of head of the free worldy or unfree worldy. And she's going the other way. The other way. By the way, just as a sidebar, I heard some wonderful rabbi I was listening to, and he pointed out that the Vilna Gon says, even the sounds you make, the Tamim on the Torah, reveal things to us. Right? When it describes the women going there, it uses a Kadma Azla. It's, it's like two hooks like this above letters. Kadma, they went forward, but as they wanted to go. They were looking forward. When it comes to Lakach, it's read slowly, right? It's Munach. She didn't want to go. This was against her will, okay? But Lakach Esther. Okay, so now we have two names. Tanya, are you listening? Here's your answer. Hadassah Esther. What is Hadassim? When Sukkot, one of the Dalit mean one of the four species. Which one is it of the four? Myrtle. It is the myrtle. Excellent. It's the myrtle, right? The Hadassim. What do we know about the myrtle? It's very, very green. Very green, right? It's a green plant. Esther. What's this? What's Esther? Esther means hidden. Hidden. Remember, the Gemara asks, Maras, where is Esther in the Torah? Where do we see Esther's name in the Torah? You can't see Esther in the Torah. She didn't live in the time of the Torah, the five books of Moses. And the answer is, Moshe Rabbeinu tells the Jewish people, the end of his life, in face, Sefer Tabarim, Vanochi Hastir Aspanai. God tells us he's going to surely hide his face. There are times in Jewish history where God hides his face. This is one of those times where you don't see God. Now, Esther means it's a code name. It's also, says the Gemara, a star also means the moon. The moon. She was beautiful like the moon that shines at night. And also Ishtar is a Persian name. I think the word star is related to it, I believe. Right? One of the planets. So it seems a very beautiful name, which was a code name and also was hidden didn't show her real roots. At this point, it wasn't a Jewish name. No one had that name beforehand, as far as I know. Right? Hadassah, probably. But not Esther. And also, it's a name that would be accepted in Persian society. A name of those, and that's important. A big part of her mission, we're going to see, is that nobody can know that she's Jewish. No one can know where she comes from. She's going to hold that information back. We'll see why. She's going to be nistal, hidden. Like the moon at night, right? During the day, rather, right? Only revealing herself at certain times to certain people. It's very important. So was she beautiful or not? So the Gemara, one opinion is she was extremely beautiful. She was Esther. 
She was extremely beautiful. Whoever saw her fell in love with her, and Achashverosh, the proof is, fell absolutely in love with her immediately. Immediately. He's actually not even going to look at the rest of the women. As soon as she comes forward, bang, she gets the job. We're going to see that. However, Hadassah, says the Gemara, is Yarok. And Yarok means green. And the Mamalawa says, you know what? This is actually so, not so nice. Some say she had, she had an olive green complexion. Hello. And some say no. Some say when she found out she was going to marry that Meshuggah, she turned green in fright. She was green. What is green? Not so good. Some say actually Yarok in the Torah is actually yellow. And Yarok Rok is a deep yellow. Yarok Akarati is green. Some say she was yellow. Yeah? And she turned yellow in fright and she wasn't such a beautiful woman. However, one thing we know, Tanya, you're listening to me, a very important concept here. You ask the question, is the answer. You can have someone who is actually not so attractive and yet to get to see their nistar, their hidden aspects of themselves and they're really wonderful people and what do they become? Extremely beautiful. And the Gemara says that was Esther. And she wasn't so beautiful. However, her actions were so beautiful and she has such beautiful charisma and chain that her beauty, sh- you, you couldn't help but be attracted to her. So we're not interested in her looks. We're interested in her mannerisms, the way she acted, and she had such a beautiful chain, a chutzel chesed, the Gemara says Hashem gave her, that as soon as you spoke to her, you fell in love with her. You ever have that experience? You meet someone not so good looking, they're not so good looking. Then you get to know them, and they become good looking. My wife says, when she first met me, okay, never mind. Okay, so... <laughs> Watch it. That's what happened to Esther. So there we see a contradiction. She wasn't so good looking according to the Gemara. She was ugly. She was green. But she had such a chain, such a beauty about her, that as soon as you got to meet her, you're like, wow, I am in love. And that's going to happen to very And he had many, many beautiful women to choose from. That's how we see beautiful. By the way, you see this hint of that as a side point. I mentioned this before in the word panim. Panim is a face. Nachon? Panim is a face. What gives you beauty? Your face. You don't say, wow, look at her hand, right? Look at his knee, all right? That's a good looking up. You say, the face is beautiful. But the poet panim also spells panim inside. Because what a person like inside reflects on their face and makes it beautiful. Sarah Menu was extreme, one of the most beautiful women in the world. And Esther is considered the most beautiful women in the world. But she was Yarok. But she has such chain, such a grace to her. There's no English word to translate word chain. Such some quality that you couldn't help but see absolute and tremendous beauty in her. So that's Esther, that's Hadassah. Wait, what's the other thing for Panim? Panim is face, also Panim means inside. Inside. Inside, Panim. If you change the vowels, it's face slash inside. By the way, interesting, right? Anya, the word face comes from the English word facade, pure exterior. Oh. Okay, so we want to know what's going on inside. Who gave her the Esther? That's a good question. Seemingly, it was Mordechai. Seemingly, it was Mordechai. That seems to be. All right? He's the one who gave her that name. Okay? We're not told. We're not told. But, that's the name. but that was not her real name. Hadassah was her real name. So now he's gathered together all these women, and she is Telaka. Very important. She's taken against her will. You write those words down, right? Lekabetz, 126 of them. Tilakach Esther. Okay, very, very good. Where do they go? El Yad Haggai. Hey, guy. Haggai. Who's Haggai? Haggai is in charge of the women's house in Shushan Habira, in that central capital location of Shushan Habira. And he takes it there, and he is the Shomer Ha-Nashim. Wait, Anna. Yes. If she wasn't so pretty, why did they take it? Oh, everyone saw great beauty in her. Everyone saw it. It wasn't just Akashvera. She had this quality inside her that as soon as you met her, she's just extremely beautiful. Everyone did. Actually, even Haggai is going to right now. Haggai is going to realize that she's the chosen one and he's going to expedite her into the palace. Here, watch carefully. It's all there. Vatitava na ramena. And the young maiden was beautiful in his eyes. Even Haggai, who's running, right, the Beis Anashim, this house of women, 
that all women being collected to, even he saw the tisa chesed lefanav. Look at what he says. The yibahel. The yibah. What's yibahel? It's a very important Hebrew word. The yiri. Bahala. He's like, woo! We got a hot one here. The yibahel. He like rushed her through the system. Even he saw she was beautiful. It wasn't just a It wasn't just like the cloud of his eyes. He's like, wow, this girl, mm, she's the one. She's the one. And he's going to give her. But you behold, Ed Kamroke quickly gives her the uh, cosmetics, right? And everything that she needs. And he gives her seven maids. Seven maids to take care of her. Now, once again, he doesn't know she's Jewish. She still kept it private. By the way, up to now, it makes sense, right? Later on, it's going to be a little difficult to figure out why she doesn't reveal her origins. But right now, it makes sense. Because if she's Jewish and she refuses to go, which she refused to go till a cuff, taken against her will, and like, oh, because you're Jewish, Achshosh finds out, kill all the Jews. He could do that. He's the king, right? Makes sense. It could be he turns around and be like, oh, I see, you're Jewish. So it makes sense up to this point why she keeps her whole origins quiet. Later on, why she made queen, it's not so clear, but it's really important. Her entire mission is only going to work if she does not reveal who she is and where she's from. Okay? Hold on to it. We'll get there in a second. So now she's sitting in the Beit HaNashim. He's, she's given all of this makeup, right, to make it beautiful. By the way, even that's controlled. You see, Ahasuerus doesn't let them do whatever they want. He's like, I'll give you the cosmetics. It's like, I said, what do you care, cosmetics? It's like, and he brings the women up and he gave them makeup. Right? He gave them cosmetics. Why is that important? So the tumbral care, the cosmetics, is important to say, you're only beautiful because of me, Achish says. Right? He's removed all power, even beauty or self-sustenance, from every one of these women who has turned up for the job. He's keeping a tight control. He can't say that explicitly because he ain't going to be happy about that. So it's very, very subtle. They were. They were supplying them. Why were they allowed to have their own? I'm going to give it to you. That means you're beautiful because of me. Okay. He's, he's trying to, he's controlling them still. Why does she have seven maids? What is this seven maid? Here? Why is that maid? Who cares how many maids she has? And this, by the way, this question is a really important question. You want to write it down. These seven maids of which we're talking are going to reveal something very, very important to us. And that is another question, which is, did Esther keep her Judaism in the palace or did she forsake her religion and her people? I'll say that again. The question we have to look at, of which the seven maids is going to answer, you should be able to figure it out by now, is, I got you, Rachel. Does, does Esther keep her Judaism in the palace? Write this down. Or... Does she abandon it? What? Esther, the great Sadeket? Would she abandon Judaism? The answer is, we don't know. We see many people who rise to power and fame and neglect their people and neglect their faith. I mean, we know she didn't. She's a great Sadeket. She's a Nevi'ah. She's a prophetess. But at the beginning, we're like, one second, take it against the world. Who knows? Who knows? And by the way, this happens over many years. Maybe she breaks down. So we need to answer, and the, and the McGill is going to answer this in code and tell us, actually, she kept very strong in her faith. Rachel, now you can speak. Okay, so I don't know if this is right, but is it because she was given one for each one of the days? That is correct. Right, and then she sent the one that was the seventh one that was for Shabbos, she sent her home. Right, right. So she had seven maids for seven days of the week. Okay. There was a maid for Sunday and Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and Shabbat. Very, very good. <laughs> Why do you need one for Shabbat? What's the big deal? Why is that going to help her keep her Judaism alive? Why does she need one for Shabbat? Yeah. Oh, so What's that telling us? I'm no, 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 no. Is there all, is that the one person? Have one woman right through Shabbat to Shabbat. What's the big deal? Oh, now you're thinking. She think about it. Think about it. You can figure it out. Okay, she had one every day. She had one every day. Except Shabbat, she had a different one. Yeah. Why? She had a Jewish one. Nope. Okay. Um, so she did so because it's something that like keeps it separate. Like the whole what? point of Shabbos is he's like Kadosh. Imagine you're made on Monday. Yeah. What's Esther doing? Oh. Whatever she wants. Let's see your Tuesday's made. What are you doing? You're seeing whatever she wants. Uh, 
Hello. Now you turn up on Shabbat. And what do you see? Rest. She's not doing anything. Right. She's not writing. She's not plowing. She's keeping Shabbat. They didn't know that. As far as you know, that's how she acts the entire week. She's a lazy good for nothing who does no malacha, who does no work. So she needed a separate maid just for Shabbat. She asked for this one? She did. Yeah. She, she was given seven maids. Why would she do that? So that she was able to keep Shabbat and not stand out. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm seeing some different Shabbat activity. So she was given seven maids so that each maid, every day she had a new one. So when Shabbat maid turned up, what is she going to say? I'm always like this. Me? Lift the pen? Forget that. And they have no idea. And if you have a maid for six days and one for one day, you're like, why does she have a separate maid for Shabbat? Oh, she's Jewish. It was all there to keep her Judaism alive. So she, she asked for seven maids? Uh, asked or was given. It seems like she was given seven maids. Maybe she asked for them. Maybe she asked for them, yeah. That's what he gave her. Letet la means was given to her. means seemingly she requested it. Remember, Haggai likes her. By the way, look at the coincidence so far. She happens to be adopted, happens to be an orphan. Oh, by the orphan thing, I forgot to mention this. Sorry, sorry, orphan, orphan, orphan. Why is that important? The Gemara says something unbelievable, which is very relevant to us. Why is it important for me that she's an orphan? Because there's a mitzvah of honoring your parents. There's a mitzvah to honor your parents. And? If you don't do it. If you don't do it, you're in big trouble. She needed schut, she needed merit. We lose a lot of merit by not honoring. Honoring parents is the hardest mitzvah in the Torah. Trust me. <laughs> very, very difficult. Never to answer your parents back. Say so it was a mirshal. It could have been bad, but she could have lost merit. You know what Hashem did? Made her an orphan. She need, part of her survival was that she was an orphan and thereby did not have to deal with honoring parents where she could have made a lot of mistakes and lost a lot of her merit. Oh, yeah. Meaning, when you honor your parents, you can, there's a lot of mistakes you can make which can take away from your merits. It's very difficult. She didn't have to deal with that. She was an orphan. She didn't have to do with that. Okay, fine. So now she's we know she's keeping Shabbat. Hmm? She made up for it? Well, she didn't need that. She didn't need that. She was not give, Parents could have been a problem for her. Spiritually, it could have, could have led to her not having all the merit that she needed. Okay? So we know so far she's keeping Shabbat, yeah. I noticed that how she was, it was possible for her to keep her identity. If you said that Mordechai was like in the council of the king, and Probably she was living separately. No one knew. No one knew. Maybe she was living separately at that point. Maybe they thought she just adopted some random woman. Nobody knew she was Jewish. Nobody knew where she was from and Jewish. It was all hidden. It was all hidden. Nobody knew. Even the Jews didn't know, by the way. Even the Jews didn't know. Okay? Why would they not know? Why would they know? Because they kept it quiet. They kept it quiet. Also, they know. No, 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 they, 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 no, Mordechai and Esther kept it quiet that, that what she was, that she was actually Jewish. They, they weren't even sure. What? The whole they kept, they kept it quiet from everyone. Their whole life. What do you mean the whole life? life? They didn't tell anyone they're Jewish? Yeah. No, they knew he was Jewish. He was the leader of the Jewish people. Okay, so he okay. They thought maybe they just adopted some young girl. So Mordechai never said that. No, was, you're going to see right now. Hold on. The, nobody knew. Okay, let the, especially the Jews knew. I think it would have ended up on Instagram and Facebook within a minute. So what they like, you know what? It's like, uh, there's different ways to sh share information. Telephone, telegram, tell a Jew. It's going to get out eventually, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Now, this is an important word. The Gemara learns out from the word of here in verse 9, chapter 2. They change something. So, what do they change? The food. The food. Now, there's actually a machloket in the Gemara. There's a machloket in the Gemara. What is a machloket? Did she keep kosher or not? Did she keep kosher or not? She Does she have to keep kosher? No. no. At this point, no, because it's life or death. But you don't have to give your life up for kosher. However, one opinion is that she kept kosher. And what did she eat that was kosher? Fruit. Seeds. Nuts and seeds. And that's one reason we have... What do we eat? On Purim? Poppy seeds, yeah. What? Poppy seeds in the homentashen, they put little black seeds in there. That's a real homentashen. This whole jelly thing is nonsense. It's an Aveira. They put poppy seeds in there. I grew up with, I've never had jelly and chocolate and you know, it was always poppy seeds. And that's actually a zecher to the uh, seeds that she ate. Remember, it's the poppy seeds that she ate which is the palace. There's another opinion that says in the Gemara, she ate fat, juicy pig. Hog meat. 
and she didn't keep kosher, she had to survive, and she actually ate non-kosher food. That is an opinion of the Gemara, but the general consensus is, Ve'yishaneha, she changed, what changed for her? Her food, okay? And there she is, so she's in a good place right now. Well, she's in a terrible place, but she's been accepted. Hagai likes her, he's hooking her up, she's got a seven maize, she's keeping Shabbos, she's keeping kosher, okay? Or they're taken against her will. Ellie Shev, what's on your mind? The word for the, her being changed, where is it? Vayishaneh. Shinoi is a change, in verse 9, yeah. uh, halfway through the Pasuk. Yeah. Vayishaneh. The Gemara Dashans. What do you change? You change your lifestyle, change your food. Yeah. Did each, pers- each person who came to um, Ahasuerus' palace get servants, though? Yeah. Did they get seven servants? That we don't know. She had seven, one for each day of the week. It's pointed out. Okay. It's pointed out. Okay. Gila. Is, is this where the Nabati idea of eating that yeah. and like a just the court? Because he also did that. Who did? Daniel. Yes. He Very good. Here, yeah. Well, he's Daniel's going to be here. He's yeah. going to turn up on the scene in a few minutes. We're going to meet him. Actually, he's going to die during the Megillah. He's actually going to be assassinated during the Megillah. The Prophet Daniel. Oh, he came before. So should you get the idea from him? Oh, I see. Did you get the idea from him? I don't know. That I don't know. Okay. Law, look at look at verse ten. Law he gidar esta et ama ve et moladata. She did not tell anyone. The fact that it's mentioned means it's really important. She did by the way, none of you know at this point what her mission is. She has an insane mission. I'm gonna show you that's hinted at, it can't be told explicitly. She had an insane mission to save the Jewish people, which Mordechai is building up to. And this is a very important piece of the puzzle to help her get there. This Lohigida Amma, that Molotata, she doesn't say where she comes from. But really, it was a suicide mission. Insane. The fact it worked is crazy. You don't know yet, we're going to see it soon. But it's really planet mental. What was going on with the Jews uh, at this point? Like before, no, 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 no. It's coming. Oh no! The Jews right now, they're doing, they're in Galut, and they're doing their thing. Right? I mean, they're fearful, they're in exile. Not so bad. He knows something is going to happen. He's up on this. Why? He knows. Because HaKadosh Baruch is Maktim Rafua Lamaka. He knows something's going on. He knows something bad is coming. Mi Achacham, who's a wise person, wrote on Olad. He knows something bad's happening. He knows that something is going to be occurring, which is going to lift up. By the way, there's already a hint to it. There's already a hint to it. There's something bad's coming. What was that? Who's bad? Who's the bad guy here? Who's causing the problems? Haman. Has Haman been spoken about yet? No. Has Haman... Yes! Where's Haman been mentioned already? Memuchan! So he's like, whoa, 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 one second. Who's being elevated over here? Right, the Prime Minister? Now he's taking his, his Vice President, his main advisor, is in a Maliki. Something bad's coming. Mm, we're in trouble. So he knows something's going on. And maybe the Jews knew it too. So they knew something bad's happening. So she, ki, why does she not say anything? Ki Mordechai tziva leah, Hashem otagid. Because Mordechai says, don't tell. Now at this point, you would have thought, what do mean? Doesn't she not? At this point, she actually probably was willing to tell. She's like, well, why, why can I not tell? The reason I didn't tell is because maybe I wouldn't have got the job or they would have seen me not wanting to be the wife of Achash Beirush as a Jewish thing and that would have started anti-Semitism. But now I'm here in the Beit Nashim What's the big deal? He's like, no, 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 no. You're not getting the full picture, my dear. You're not getting the full picture. The full picture is that you still cannot tell because your mission hasn't even begun yet. You've got something big coming. And by the way, at this point, she could have thought, one in 127? What are the chances? This is just basically a wake-up call. Hashem wants me to do teshuva, right? This is all part of the challenge of life. And now I'll be out of here like the rest of them. Right? Maybe I have to spend the rest of my life on the herring. But you know what I'm saying? What's going to do? Mordechai's thinking, no, no, it's not about you. This is about the entire Jewish people. The entire Jewish people. He realizes something big is about to go down. Well, the whole yom vayom, every single one, there's a repetition of word, it means all the time. And we said, yarok is green, yarakrak is very green. Adom is red, adamdam is very red. Right? The whole yom vayom, every single day. Mordechai starts walking 
outside the Beit Hanashim. Whoa, 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 wait, what are you talking about? Mordechai is going to the Beit Hanashim where these women are? First of all, where is the Beit Hanashim? Shishon Abira. Yeah, but he works there. Mo- oh, he's working there. He's an important person. He's a Jew in the government. So he's able to be there. Now, does that mean he could just go walk? So he's in Shishon Abira. Here's Mordechai. Right? There's Esther. She's trapped inside Shishon Habira, wherever she is, in her little uh, women's section. And he's walking around. Suspicious? He's looking out for her. But it's suspicious, right? That he's walking there? Yeah, what's he doing? It's like a great rabbi. I'll just make my way to the ladies' section of the, right? And so the rabbi's like, I'll just go to the, uh, you know, the Ezra and Nash. Mithalech. That's what he did. He's just not walking around. I'm just walking around. But why is he doing it? Why is he doing it? Because he wants to know et ledat et shalom Esther. He wants to know if he can hear something. What's going on? Did they find out she's Jewish? Did she get killed? He wants to hear what's happening. Okay? So he is in Shishon Abira. He's a very important person. And he's going to use that power to figure out if she is okay. Uma yaseh ba. Very important words. Uma what is happening through her. Sounds familiar, those words? Very similar to Miriam. Wants to know what's going to happen to Moshe Rabbeinu in the Teva, little ark, where she floats him out into the water. What's going to happen through him, through Moshe, and what's going to happen through her, through Esther? Meaning, I know something big's about to happen. I want to know what that is. I want to be informed. This is not a coincidence. None of this is a coincidence. I want to know what's going on. So he's like, I'll just walk over here. Shall I make my way to the house of the women? Right? See if I can hear anything. Does he hear anything? Yeah. 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 Something really, really important. There was a line of women coming to Hashverosh, right, who either uh, raped or willingly gave themselves uh, they lived for one year in this um, Beit HaNashim. Why one year? Because he wanted to see, says the Mamal West, if they were beautiful all year. Because right? some people look good in the summer, some look good in the fall. So he wanted to make sure that she was, a, that each woman was a quality person the entire, the entire year. Okay? So that's six Right? There's six months of Shemin Amor and six months of other Basamim and other things. And that's what every single woman has. Why did it take him so long? He wanted her, to see the, for Esther, what? Oh, it's not going to be much less. Yeah, but he said he waited a year already. No, the plan was they would stay there for one year. Oh, but they didn't do it. No, no, they didn't. They didn't. Or maybe they did, we don't even care. Because he gave them whatever they wanted, right? To accompany her to the harem of the palace. In the evening she would come, and the next morning she would return to the second harem. So they're living in one harem, they would go to him, and then he's like, not for me. Would he send them back home? No. no. no harem number two. You're with me the rest of your life. You're captured. You ain't going anywhere. All right? They were stuck. It was a really miserable experience. They were totally, totally stuck. Okay? So they went at night, came back in the morning. It's a code word for... All right? They were with him for the night. Okay, so the, 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 the Megill is speaking in Lashon Naki, in clean language, right? Don't want to make it seem uh, bad in any way. But Erev Hiba'ah. Okay, fine. Now, who's in charge of Hari number two? In charge of Hari number one is Haggai. Number two is a guy called Shashgas, Siris Samelach. He is a eunuch. A eunuch is a person who is incapable of being with a woman, and he's in charge of the Pelagshim. At this point, they are Pelagshim. What's a, what's a Pelagash? A secondary wife. A secondary wife. Okay? Shashgatz is in charge of number two. He's in charge of number two. We're in number two. He was a unit, he's a Suris. He specifically chose someone who was not able to be with women to take care of his harem. Because 
You didn't trust anybody else, did he? He's a unit. He doesn't have the ability to be with a woman. Uh, that's a good question. Well, at this point, they're not actually in that direction anyway. It's only the second one. It's only the second one. Mumble, mumble, mumble. Mumble, mumble, mumble. Yeah. A harem. It's good to know. No, that is. It is. That is a, uh, a location where a king or someone would keep their women for future use. For future use. That's what a harem is. We should know. Shashkatz has got the job of taking care of that particular position. Okay, by the way, it's very reminiscent of the Rambam. The Rambam was in charge of the Sultan of Egypt. He was a doctor for all of his wives because he was a tzaddik and he trusted him. These are big trustful positions, you know what I'm saying? You don't want anyone... So I guess maybe at this point it was a more delicate uh, position because at this point it had already been together. Okay, now once again, look at verse... Uh, now it's the, cho- it's the chance, uh, the turn of Esther, right? tor, it's Esther's turn. We took a levo elamelach to come. And she didn't ask for anything. The Lord big davar. She asked for nothing. Why do I need to know that? Why do I need to know she asked for nothing? I'm not greedy. I'm not interested. I don't want no makeup. I want nothing. <coughs> All the women are there. Like, mm, right? Put their stuff on, their fineries. She says, I don't want anything. She goes in there. Horror. Makeupless. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Thinking, now that is definitely not going to get me this job. And Hashem says, that is definitely going to get you this job. <laughs> She's the same person married to. Okay, that's why she was still married, according to Gemara, to Mordechai. Esther, whoever saw her, she had tremendous chain in the eyes of everyone. So the Guinness was telling us, maybe she wasn't as beautiful as you think she was, but once you saw her and got to know her, oh, she was amazing. Vatilakach Esther, there it is again. She was taken against her will to the harem, and she was taken against her will to see Achash Beirosh. El Amelach Achash Beirosh, El Beit Malchot, Bachodesh Hasiri, He Chodesh Teves. She was taken in the Chodesh Hasiri, the 10th month, which is the month of Teves. That is the first time we see names for months. Names for months. How do we see names? Uh, how are months identified in the Torah? First, second, third. First, second, third. Same as days of the week. The only name of the week with a name is? Shabbat. 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 The only day of the week with a name is Shabbat. Yeah. <coughs> Here, it was always the same. There's Chodesh Rishon, which is Nisan. Right? Iyar, Sivan Tammuz. Where do we get the names from. These are Babylonian names because they were in Babel. Remember that. So this is written to the people who are disconnected from Israel. And now for the first time, we're given names and numbers. We're given names and numbers. The 10th month, which by the way, you the reader who's now in Galut, you should know, you know this as January, February, in this case, Teves. Okay? Teves. So now it's given the name and the number so that you understand where we are in the month. Rabbi Shnas Sheva Lamalchuto. And this is the seventh year of his reign. Wow. It's taking a long time. Right? When you read this thing, it's like a two day story. This is taking a long time. How long since he killed? A few years. Yeah, it feels like it's been two weeks. I know, because it has been in my class, that's why. <laughs> the Yehava Melachet Esther. He loves Esther. And by the way, what usually happened, they come in, they're with him, and they go to the second house. What's he doing? Keeping He's keeping her. Right? Bad move, Achashverosh. Bad move. Why? Because you want to keep them in suspense. Okay, off you go. 
you know, Will Corley don't call us. He didn't play hard to get. He didn't play hard to get. Right, well played. Right, and the like, oh my God, she is unbelievable. I love her. You know, forget the other 125 or whoever's left. Right, she's in. Send her back. Mm, she ain't going anywhere. She ain't going anywhere. She's staying right here. It doesn't say she's the most beautiful woman. It says <coughs> she was chain. Oh, something special. She had something inside her that I just fell in love with. By the way, how old was Esther in this story? How old is Esther in this story? If Esther would be played in a movie, it would surprise Adam Duncan, it's a great movie, right? It's a great story. Who would play her in a Hollywood production? Esther, the queen. I would think she's young, 12, 15, 20, mid-20s, right? Scarlett Johansson, right? Good fun to play. She's Jewish, why not? Right? That would be a good player. What? She's okay, she's blonde. But she'll dye the hair, whatever. Oh, I don't know who that is. But we'll find someone. <laughs> All right. I just got it to ask if she's Jewish and my wife loves her. But forget that, right? So, according to the Mamala West, some say she was actually in her 50s, even 60s. Are you kidding? Wow. Why? What's wrong with that? What are you saying about a woman in her 60s? That she's not one. Wow. I'm, I'm a little yeah. offended by that. <laughs> Hello. She had a youngness to her. What? Oh, yeah, we're her kids, bye bye. No, like, not imagine, yet. No, her and Alpha Shapiro kids. Have to one kid's kids coming. No. One kid's coming. What about her and oh, that's not a steerer. Right? We see great Jewish women having uh, children much later on in life. What about her and Mordecai? Why, you're upset with the 60 thing. No. I'm sorry, she's 19. You happy now? You all feel loved and beautiful? <laughs> right, you want the job? Because it's still open if you want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know, you wouldn't have thought. That's the whole thing. The whole thing is ridiculous. That's the whole point. The That's the point of the story. That's the point of the story. What are the chances? She was chosen at that age, and he chooses her, and she gets loved, right? And she's, the whole thing is because after coincidence. It makes no sense. You've got to see Hashem's hand guiding the entire story. That's the improbability of all these events is immense. It's getting much, much worse. Yeah. How did she end up with a job? Yeah, how she was alive. She faked it, I don't know. She Wait. somehow, she got yeah, through the loophole. Kids with We're not spoken, it's not told about. We're not, the Gemara? She's going to have, the Gemara does not tell us. I, I've been through the Gemara. I don't remember every part of it, but from what I remember, it doesn't tell us. And I've read many, many, many commentaries. I've never seen any commentaries on this. What do you say about her age? We're not told. We're not told so that. How do you get We're not told. No, there's no assumption. It's different opinions how old she was at this point. By the way, the actual story takes a long time, right? I think the whole thing, the whole event, like 20 years from beginning to end till we get through all the action. She got 80 by then. Well. <laughs> <laughs> An 80-year-old Jewish woman could be absolutely beautiful and have tremendous fame. But no, yeah, I know that. Sure. Sure. That's the weird thing that she Suddenly I'm the feminist and you're like crazy people over there. She seems like a young superhero. I know, so it seems like. I'm just saying, don't. Always assume no, visions like and movies you've seen. It's not always so simple. Sarah is called extremely beautiful and she was 90 years old, right? So, 100%, 90 years old, 100%. Yeah, that's crazy. If ever was, ever was older, that was older. But if everything I said, that's going to get you upset. She's taken, right? 60, no, we're not buying. Now, now that's the straw for the camel. She looked like me, okay? I messed up. Yes. So hidden miracles, open miracles, yeah. But people, people weren't living like Sarah lived. Yeah, absolutely, they were. At this point, they were. No, they were not. By that time, they were. I thought after most. Forty was a good. Or a hundred whatever. Okay. So what does he do? It happens. What does it do? He falls in love with her. She is beautiful, right? Look at verse seventeen. Be a sem. Keter Malchub Russia. He doesn't even let him leave the house. He's like, here's your crown. What, what about the rest of us? We're sitting with her guy. Yeah, sorry about that. Mm, you know? See you next week, love. Right now, I got a queen I just crowned. Right now, right then. Now that is how to get your king. Mm. 
tachat vashti. He takes her tachat vashti. Remember, tachat we said means instead of vashti or underneath. So you know what? She's still. She's got the crown, but she's still below where vashti is. The yas hamelach mishte. He throws a feast, gadol, a big one. Lochol sarav avadav for his people at Mishter Esther, and he calls it the feast of Esther. Vanacha lemedinat asavi ten masat kiramelach, and he proclaims, give gifts. It's a big. It's the royal wedding. It's the royal wedding. It's a big gift, and she says nothing. Now I'm going to show you something you've never seen before. That makes sense. You get married. You're the king, right? You're Harry. You're William. He you make a big. Chasna, right? You're the, the, the Rebbe's daughter, the Rebbe's son, right? Get married, you make a big wedding. But how about this? He gathers the women a second time. What's that? He gathers the the women a second time. You've never seen that before, have you? Why is he gathering? She's queen. He's made a wedding. Why is he gathering the women a second time? What's going on over here? To see what? No, he's up a little now. He doesn't hate them. Yeah? Um, because he was so interested in what she came from. She didn't say anything. So he gathered the women a second time. He said, like, I can choose any one of you. So tell me where you Wow, how'd you know that? Oh, okay. <laughs> you cannot answer the rest of the semester. Okay? You should have taken this class. Okay. He basically throws another party and gathers women together and saying, Esther, I love you. You're my queen. But tell me where you are because I have other women I can choose. So he uses her. He doesn't torture because he loves her. But he's going to use this as a way of trying. So he throws two parties right now. The first one's the wedding. The second is the get information out of Esther party. Get the information out of Esther party. They ain't, that's why it says right afterwards, ain't Esther maget moladata, betama. She doesn't say anything. We know she doesn't say anything. It was three verses ago. But that's even after the second party, she says nothing. I'm saying nothing. Shtum, zip, I want to. But Mordechai says no. No means no. Yes. But wouldn't she be more than happy for him to just go and choose another queen instead of her? Then he wouldn't really no, 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 no. She realized at this point oh, she that did. she's the one. Okay. And he ain't letting her go. And by the way, if that happens, she's dead. Yeah. You don't just let queens off. You know what I'm saying? King of the eighth. Hello. Okay. Kashesi Valea. Mordechai, why? Because Mordechai said, don't say anything. Okay? Keep your mouth shut. Verse 21. Come, let's move. It was in those days when Mordechai Yoshe B'Shar HaMelech He's sitting B'Shar HaMelech Where's Shar HaMelech? Right there He's put himself in Shushan Habira Remember we have Shushan Which is here And we have Shushan Habira And this is where the action is happening my friends This is where we want to see All the action is happening in the capital Where Mordechai and Esther were Mordechai Yoshe B'Shar HaMelech Katsaf Big time for Teresh, Shnei, Sarisei HaMelech, Shomri Asam. There's two guys, Big Tan, Teresh. Write those names down. Big Tan and Teresh. And they're getting angry. What are they getting angry about? We don't know. We're not told. In the Megillah. Mamlo has another say, they had rather unpleasant jobs. They were Shomri Asaf, which means they were the ones who removed the bathrooms from the palace and Achashverosh. And they were the ones who would bring water. One would bring water and one would take out the water, if you know what I'm saying. Okay? So they are very, very close. They have close proximity to the bedroom of Achashverosh. And he's been busy lately. We don't have to expand, but you get the idea. And they do not like this job. And so they come up with an assassination attempt. Okay? They want to kill him. How? I think they're going to poison him, was the way they're going to get rid of him. They want him dead. Okay? Exactly what he was scared of. And Mordechai 
finds out about it. How does he find out about it? Because he's sitting in the Shara Melech. And he, oh, I'm not asking him anymore. He overhears them planning. Wouldn't that be good? For who? For the Jews if he died. If who died? Akashar. Oh, okay. It could be. But we've seen so far that replaces of dictators ends up with ones who are much worse. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. By the way, when you take over a country, you go into Iraq, you kill one, it's like, mm. next one is like, oh, I love you all. No, not exactly. You know what I'm saying? Wasn't Haman second to the king right now? Not yet. Oh. Not yet. He's moving up, okay. but he's not second to the king. That's coming in a second. That's coming in a second. So now he's hearing, he hears what's going on, and he overhears the conversation. One second. Are these guys idiots? Are these guys idiots? Put your hand down. Are these guys idiots? How do they know? How do they know? Or why do they not realize that someone's going to overhear them? Because they're speaking a different language. So they know he can hear. Right? It's like I talk, you know, Hebrew in front of my kids. I thought they learned Hebrew. You know, they're just to hide. Right? So what exactly is going on over here? Why is this, why is this pointed out? Because Mordechai comes from the Sanhedrin. In order to be on the Sanhedrin, you needed to speak 70 languages. Therefore, Mordechai knew exactly what they were saying, and they didn't mind being overheard, not knowing that he knew that this Jew knew all of these languages. Okay? Why does a member of the Sanhedrin need to know all languages? Because they're getting cases from here and there, and they have to learn right, the nuances and answer a court case in the original language. So therefore, he knew what's going on. Not right now. Okay? So he overhears them. Right? And he goes and tells Esther, realizing that he needs this information. It wasn't a coincidence. He happened to be in the right place to overhear this conversation. He's like, let me save Achishverosh's life and let me do it. B'Shem Mordechai. In the name of Mordechai. There is a Mish... I think it's actually a Brysa, actually. In, but it's in Pirkei Avot, uh, the last chapter is Bryce's, and it says there are various ways to receive Torah, and the most important thing you have to do is always ascribe information to the one you heard it from. When you give over information, or he said, B'Shem Omro. Always ascribe. If you hear an idea and you want to share it, say, that's what you always say. I heard the name of this person, this idea. I heard the name of that person, this idea. We learn that from here. By the way, is this Torah that's being given over? No. It's life-saving information. So Mordechai says, I'm going to tell Esther to tell, but make sure that when you tell him, make sure he knows it's coming from me. So Esther gives him, the, now what, what could she have done? She could have said, oh, there's this plot against you. I overheard it. Big son of Teresh wants to kill you. And I'm the one that saved you. She could have done that. Why would she have done that? To save her own skin. She didn't. She said it, shame Omro. She gave this information in the name of the person. She heard it from Mordechai. And that, we'll see later on in a couple of chapters, is going to save the entire Jewish people, which is why the Mishnah says it brings Geula Le'olam. If you say something in the name of the person you heard it from, you bring redemption to the world and you learn it out from this story. Another first. And that's a Mishnah for Yeah. But she didn't really need to use it. She already had all of his love and affection, so she could have kind of just like spread Very, very good. At this point, she doesn't. But she needs to put money in the bank because okay. in a moment, Maya, it's getting bad. I mean, and we're going to need, we're going to need that favor of the king a little later when Haman turns up on the scene. Yeah, I mean, right now, they don't need it, right? But they're going to. But just for conveying the message, doesn't that already put her in favor in his eyes? Yes. It so does. She got, she got, like, no, but she's, her, she's, the real, she's the real of the information. The one who overheard it was Mordechai. Mordechai's included in it. She could have taken all the credit for herself. Yeah. She gave a little bit of to him. It wasn't only me. It was only Mordechai who did it. He was the one who came forward. Oh, he came forward? Great. Yes, Erica? Um, how is he part of the Sanhedrin? If this, is, if this is after Sanhedrin's gone. Yeah, but yeah. you just said that he was. Okay. He was part of the Sanhedrin. But how? Because then that means if it's like he's like 80-something years old. Yeah, wasn't he double for all that time? Because there's 70 years of God. No, no, we're, not the, we're nowhere near the end of the 70 years. We're nowhere near the end of the 70 years. We're right in the middle. There's 70 years. It's going to take another, we have another 20, 30 years for the end. We have a, a, we have a long time to get to the end. Yeah, but I'm saying, so then how did Baal Shotzah 
He made a wrong calculation, calculated from a different beginning point. For beginning? No. He made a wrong calculation. Why is that stupid? How do you know when 70 years ends? When does it start? Does it start with the first Jew being kicked out? Does it start with the 30th Jew being kicked out? The 1,000th Jew? Right? There were different opinions. Yeah? Oh, he just got the information to her via a individual who we're going to meet in a few minutes. And Akash Rosh didn't care that they had connection? Oh, she's, he's a leading person in the government. I heard from uh, one of the deputies of the government, so he overheard this thing called Mordechai, happens to be a Jew, that this is happening. And he doesn't no mind problem. that she's meeting politicians? Not meeting. <laughs> she's getting information. No. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> What? That was his calculation. That was wrong. It was wrong. It wasn't. It wasn't even seventy years. They were all wrong. Hashverosh was wrong. Bashash was wrong. Right? It's gonna take another 30, 40 years. We're in the middle of the seventy years right now. Okay. Gives them the information. He hangs them both, and the chapter finishes with Vikatev Besefer Divrei Hayamim. He writes this information down, which is also important. He could have ignored it. But it's very important. He writes it down in the Divrei Hayamim, right? In this book. So the seed is sown. Here is the Rufu for the Makkah. Because later on, when Haman wants to kill the Jewish people and he gets all his power, which he's about to do, this book is going to save his life. This book is going to save his life. Okay. Marvelous. We'll stop over there and we'll pick up chapter three next class. We're going to start doing two chapters every class. I think we're going to push through. Oh, I had to do it. Uh-huh. Yeah.